Hey guys, William here from fitnessforbackpain.com coming at you again with another coffee and coaching episode. This one is gonna be pretty cool. I'm talking about fusions. If you have had a fusion before and you are wondering what the heck you should do, stay tuned. If you want more bonus content, go over to fitnessforbackpain.com. I've got a gift of four pillars to relief, how to approach your lower back pain using exercise, and the biggest, biggest, biggest mistakes that we make, and that causes more issues for the long run. Check that out, fitnessforbackpain.com for more details. So a question came in from a reader that's talking about a five level fusion. Doesn't really matter what level it is or what discs are involved. We're just gonna go with five level fusion. He didn't give me too much information, but the question is, just when I go to ask the question, I always forget it. How can you exercise after a five level spinal fusion and continue with six to eight level of pain? All right, so breaking this question down, it's really gonna come down to a few different things. I'm gonna go over as much as I can on a high level with this because it's very by the person when it comes to answering what you should or should not do when it comes to spinal fusions. Now, with that being said, if you have a five disc fusion, you've gotta think about a few things. You have to think about what you can and cannot do. You should understand where this fusion is at and what you can't do now. There's some things that you're just not gonna be able to do, like bend and flex aggressively in that area. All right, so if you're trying to bend, if you're trying to do things that you used to do before your fusion, you're not gonna be able to do that, and that's really important. I actually have an article you can check out. It's called The Do's and Don'ts of Exercise After a Spinal Fusion. I'll link it up here below in the comment section. You can check that out. I also have a YouTube Live on this channel. You can check that out. It talks about fusions as well. But that's what you're gonna start with. You're gonna start with assessing what you can and cannot do. The obvious things are pretty much what you're gonna hang on to. A, stay away from the things that are gonna cause your pain to trigger, also known as your pain triggers. You wanna practice good spine hygiene outside of the gym just as much as inside the gym. Understand that you may have to stick with exercises that you are doing on actual machines. You may not be able to deadlift right now or ever again in a traditional fashion. You can do them another way, but may not be able to do it the way you used to do it. You may not be able to go out there and squat and load the spine. You might not be able to go out there and do jumping jacks and do jump roping because there's gonna be some, some stuff that's going on with that fusion that's not gonna allow you to do that. Again, you've got an area is above and below that fusion. Those discs are now taking all that load. So you have to understand that you're making investments in your future. Every exercise that you do, every sport that you play, you have to think about what you're doing to your spine in the sense of in the long game, the long-term game. That's why people go back for, for repeat fusions because the discs above the, uh, the original site become damaged. They become broken down. They start to herniate or whatever their issue may be. They start having more issues. So the doctor goes in there and cuts them open, fixes it, fuses that one, fuses the next one, fuses the next one, because they don't go into it with good habits. So the other part of the question is, what do I do when I'm at a level six and eight of pain? Well, the number one thing is you probably shouldn't be doing too much exercise if you are at a six or eight level of pain. I would go back to your lifestyle. I'd go back to the things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis that could be causing some pain uh, that or that's keeping you at that level of pain. That's a high level of pain. I wouldn't suggest you going into the gym thinking that what you're gonna do in the gym is gonna reduce such a high level of pain. Now, a little bit of pain is okay. If you can kind of go in there and you're at a level three or four and you gotta take it easy, go slow, break into a little bit, do some, do some body weight stuff, do some banded exercises, do some machines that you can manage, um, and then just don't push it. Don't go too hard, don't do a full workout. If you normally do two or three sets of each exercise, do one set, do two sets, and cut the exercise down as far as exercise, cut the workout down in half. If you have eight exercises, just do four of them. Do one set of each exercise and then leave. That's ultimately what you want. If you sit all day at your job and you want to be active, you want to go exercise, go do that. But make sure you're able to tailor it to keep your sensitivity 
under control. Another thing you wanna look at when it comes to your level of pain, so again, you said that you're at a six or eight level of pain, go back to the fundamentals of why we are in pain, okay? There's a big thing about the, the biopsychosocial aspects of pain, the mental side of pain, the stress, your life, your, your job, how you manage pain, your, your nerve sensitivity sounds like it could be very elevated where you don't have a lot of room for margin when it comes to exercise or activity because your, your nerve sensitivity or your body's alarm system is so fired up. So because of that, exercise is not gonna fix that issue. You've gotta think about your whole life as a whole. What are you, how are you managing your stress? How are you processing and handling this fusion? That's a big fusion. Do you think that you're incapable of doing anything now? Are you so, so far gone when it comes to your mental fortitude in the sense of like, you were told all these things that you're not gonna be able to do and you've swallowed that and digested that and that has become who you are today, then that's an issue. I'd say work on that. Work on re getting some literature that's gonna teach you the mind-body connection and how you can get away from feeling like you're hopeless, feeling like you, there is no hope for you to actually exercise or move again without being a level six or eight pain. Now, if you're looking for something to do while you're at a level six, eight pain, I would start with just walking. There's not much else I would tell you to do because again, ultimately what you're trying to do is lower your sensitivity. I'd hate to say, hey, yeah, go do some body weight workouts. Go, go, go YouTube or go Google you know, four body weight exercises and do those. If I tell you to do that and you go do that and then now your level is a nine or a 10, I mean, all this was worthless. I never want to give that kind of information. So you have to think about where you are, go for some walks, fast paced walks, let's start with five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, whatever you can manage. Always stay under your pain threshold. So if a five minute walk is okay, but an eight minute walk flares you up to a level nine, you wanna stay at that five and hang out that five for a couple of weeks to see if you can work up from there. The ultimate goal is to do things that will lower your sensitivity. I got some videos and some articles that I'll link below that talk about lowering your sensitivity. It talks about strategies that you can do that will help with that. A big thing that we do in the private membership is relief strategies. I'll also link that below as well. There are some specific things that you can start practicing every single day that will help massively reduce stress, reduce body tension, tightness, and ultimately try to reduce and lower that alarm system that we have as, our, as far as our nerves go. So that's it. Without making this video too long, I'm gonna spend a lot of time putting links in the comment section below, because really, I don't wanna go too much into detail, because I'd love to have more information specifically on the person, but that is a general overview of exercise with a fusion. I'm gonna give you some details and give you some resources that you can check out that will be a better resource than this video. This is a very Spark Notes version of that, um, but below you can check out some links that will go over some more detail. If you have not already, make sure you go over to fitnessforbackpain.com, join the newsletter, get all the bonus content as well as my free gift that I'm giving out to those who subscribe. And that's it, see you later.